I'm going to use my circular architecture with one-way trunks to try to win this Norwest section of the game. So initially, I'm, I will I have connected my first two cities, Miles City with Billings, in a way uh, which will allow me to make a big circle between Miles and Billings, running anti-clockwise. So initially, I've only got one track because I don't have enough money, but this will become uh, a eastbound trunk in the end, instead of uh, running in two directions, eastbound to Mile City, and then there will be a new line to the north uh, going the other way back, westwards to Billings. I destroyed all of the game's stations and tracks in Miles City because they were pointing the wrong way. Um, I've got wheat, which is a staple. This time I've purchased the farm because I want to be able to uh, make money from it, from the sale of wheat, but also expand the farm later. And it's cheaper to buy them early before business, business grows. And uh, it needs to be expanded because it is a staple food. Right at the moment, I'm supplying wheat to the brewery. So that already needs a fair bit of wheat, uh, but I've also set it up now to supply wheat further afield. Now, I'll just better zoom out a little bit here. The next city I connected is Casper uh, to Billings. Again, exactly the same idea. A single track initially operating in both directions, but it will eventually become another circle flowing southwards along the existing, no, 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 northwards, northwards, anti-clockwise, always anti-clockwise, northwards from Casper to Billings, and then there will be a new track to the west outside the cattle farm, back down to Casper, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to make a large anti-clockwise flowing circle. Also, when I have more money, I will put two stations in each city, to prevent the competition from uh, building there and destroying my plans. And each station will serve one circle or the other. The cattle farm will uh, have two tracks, one to serve the north, uh, running eastwards and then north to Billings, and then back southwards around the circle, and the other track running westwards, southwards to Casper, and running back on this existing track. So everything flows in circles to minimise the amount that trains cross over one another. I've started to build the third circle. There, there will be, I've left space here for a second station in Casper, and this will uh, again be an anti-clockwise circle uh, flowing south from Mile City to Casper, and then back north on tracks yet to be developed. So let's just see if this works. We'll see. Now, with heavier traffic, I've had to expand the capacity of the network, and I've done that using uh, one-way trunks, uh, converting earlier two-way trunks into one way. So it's this is only the beginning. We'll start at the north. We've got uh, two-way trunks, right? They, they go in both directions, north and south, to feed produce southwards into Billings and Miles. When the traffic grows too heavily, this northern area will also be based on a circular trunk. I've made a little spur in the middle of the screen here heading northwards that will go outside the cotton farm, cattle, corn, sugar to bring empty trains northwards and westwards where they will fill up and come southwards. This two-way trunk across the river will be converted 
into a southbound only trunk to feed all of these southern areas. I started off with a single track connection between Billings and Miles City and that grew and now I'm in the midst of converting it. It's not complete yet but I'm in the midst of converting it into a one-way circular trunk. So I've built so now trains between Billings and Miles City will go eastwards along the uh, southern link and return westwards across uh, the top of the mountains and over these other lines. Actually, it'll branch uh, near this carrot farm to come back southwards to Billings. It's needed a few more links to distribute uh, various things around the place. So coming from the north now, uh, produce going to Billings will exit uh, southwards and then take this first branch northwards and eventually it'll flow to the east of all of these farms but temporarily I've made this link here to return it back to the two-way trunk. Similarly, uh, produce going to Mile City will flow uh, southwards along here eastwards to Mile City and backwards currently over this temporary link back northwards. There is still a two-way trunk in the south because I've got uh, various other traffic flowing westwards. But I've started to work on that. The westbound trunk I've carried over the southbound trunk to begin the development of my of another anti-clockwise circle to the west of Billings. So trains coming from the west, for example, will flow along the south, eastbound towards Mile City, and return in the north westbound. So the red marks are for future development. So for example, at the moment, let's put the signals on. At the moment, this is a two-way trunk, but that will be converted into a eastbound one-way trunk. So I've already built the lines ready to flow eastwards and southwards here, or northwards here to feed both lines uh, when, the, uh, when all of the traffic has been resolved. But currently I've just implemented the one-way flows between Miles City and Billings. Now that I've uh, done a bit more work on the anti-clockwise loop connecting Billings with Miles City, you can see for the same amount of traffic that's flowed, flowing through, even more traffic, I've increased the number of trains, it is actually less congested and it's all flowing very smoothly and I'll just wait and see if there's any congestion and then distribute traffic around uh, to dodge the congestion or build more tra tracks or double things up if needed. And while we're at it, uh, I, there was a lot of congestion coming into and out of Casper. So this is how it develops. Firstly, by putting in two stations. Uh, the eastern station has now got its anti-clockwise loop and instead of feeding traffic around in a clumsy way uh, logs for example from the south going up north to Miles City they they pass around this loop bypassing Casper and they return on the northern side uh, coming around on this bypass so I've started in effect to now construct the larger circle between Casper and northwards there's going to be a big circle around the cattle farm and the sugar plantation uh, when needed. That only happens when there's too much congestion. Over in these new territories this is the basic pattern, two stations in each city to prevent the competition from invading, uh, served by anti-clockwise circles. 
gardener. Just for fun, I did something different. There was not enough room to make really nice big flowing circles. And also I wanted to try out this automatic, automatically signaled control signal station. They cost more, but they mean that I don't have to manually distribute the various trains to the different platforms. It does it all automatically to achieve a higher throughput. So Gardner looks different, but that's a bit of an experiment. Now, with more traffic, I've had to complete construction of my anti-clockwise circle west of Casper. But of course, the competition came in and built some infrastructure which which I have to go around so it sort of makes it more expensive and messes up my plans a bit but it doesn't matter because I'd already laid a pretty good infrastructure so I've got uh, we've got sugar being delivered northwards on the eastern side with the empties coming back southwards on the west the cattle farm I've now uh, increased into two tracks, East Rock Springs and many other cities are now connected because the big task is to achieve $2 million quarterly profit from transporting mail. So the way I'm going to try to do that is to connect as many cities as possible because they'll each want to exchange mail with one another. So I've gone on a, you can see the blue dots in the bottom right now, I've gone on a city connection binge. Uh, I've increased the size of this controlled signalling station at Gardner from two tracks to four tracks to bring in uh, I've uh, obviously that's broken out. I've sunken the bypass lines here and brought a bridge over the top of that to go northwards to, to bring in traffic from the north. I've connected cities way down south and even uh, constructed more or less standalone loops. There are two cities uh, down here with a cattle farm and all they want are cattle. They just uh, have abattoirs making meat. So again the circular, very simple circle to, to get mail between the two cities to get cattle to either of the two cities. And that will expand later maybe but for now it's just an example of a standalone circle. So I've gone really far afield connecting everything up and then creating uh, mail trains. Now Idaho, this ring here, this is rather central because we've got traffic coming in from cities all around so Idaho Falls has uh, two stations now and the western station became a bit overloaded so I expanded it to four tracks. Now when we've got these circles, normally I've got the traffic coming in and out on the outer circles which makes it difficult to get traffic across onto the inner circle and the inner tracks. So a heavy duty line coming from the south, instead of connecting it on the outside as it was previously, I've now made a bridge over into the middle of the circle. So all the traffic from the south now will feed onto the inner track and be distributed across platforms one and two, while a lot of the other heavy traffic remains on the outer tracks three and four, and the inner tracks uh, one and two, well one I think merges into two, I don't need four tracks yet, uh, but essentially, uh, we'll, we'll look at the signals here, they come in over the bridge, go to platform one, and then they come back out from the inside. So that reduces the amount of uh, traffic which has to cross over uh, other, other train routes. And while we're at it, I'll just show you, I've now completed the northern circle, uh, north of Billings and Miles City, uh, removing the temporary tracks. Now, just to end up, we are... Uh, we haven't won the game yet, but we've achieved most of the uh, goals. And uh, I'd just like to show you how the network has developed. So here in the north, we've got our big 
circular trunk network gathering produce from the various rural industries and supplying them westwards to Great Falls and then also southwards to Billings and Miles City with everything flowing smoothly around interconnected loops, concentric loops, including uh, further southward, that's a bi-directional link, we didn't have enough traffic to need to upgrade that into a big circle, but down in the south here this became congested, so we've got a eastern circle and a western circle coming out of Casper, uh, bringing all sorts of things into Casper and also bringing things out. We work northwards back up to Billings and then across to Gardner where I tried out the linear signal control station and we can see here the problem that linear networks bring. There, the congestion kept building up both on the bypass links and into and out of Gardner. So the problem is that outgoing traffic has to cross over the path of incoming traffic. So to resolve that, I had to build lots of expensive bridges and tunnels. There was not enough room in this valley to build really nice big circles, usually about 100, kilo, uh, 100 miles in length. So the cost of building things in a linear fashion using bi-directional trunks is bridges and tunnels. So I've alleviated the congestion for now and uh, it's just not as good as this system of circles, uh, which we can see again in Idaho Falls. So here there's still room for expansion of the Eastern Station, but we don't need to yet. There's not enough traffic. We're generating massive amounts of income. And all I need to do at this stage, uh, 6 million per quarter, all I need to do at this stage is earn enough money to keep buying shares in my competition, which won't take too long to buy them out. Thanks. Bye. Now, I found a bit of a problem here. This is interesting. With my new large train station, very expensive, with signalling control that I've tried in Gardner. Here we are. So I'll zoom in on the station. Uh, what this does is automatically switch trains in and out onto different tracks. We've got four tracks coming in and there are various crossovers to allow any train to come in on any track and go out on any track and the automatic signalling control controls it all in a way and it does it at each end. Now here I've got a, uh, it's not a grid lock but it's a, a, a blockage of all the trains like grid lock but it's not a grid and it's caused, if I zoom in again on this signalling control station within the bounds. This is not my track. This is the, the boundary of the station is up here near this third train. What the automatic signalling control has done is route this loco northwards out of the station head on into this incoming train. It looks like they've narrowly avoided a fatal collision and stopped just in time within inches of their lives but the upshot is this one wants to go south this one wants to go north and each is in the way of the other thereby blocking up the whole incoming stream of trains